What's up guys, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. September has historically been one of the worst months for stocks and this year was no different with tech stocks having a major correction and many other stocks taking a beating. And now as we enter October, I suspect there will be continual volatility from the up and coming presidential elections and the possibility of a second wave. And as the great saying goes, volatility equals opportunity. And I suspect there'll be many up and coming opportunities in October. So which stocks will I be buying? Well, in this video, you're going to find out as I reveal my top three stocks to buy in October. Be sure you guys watch till the end and I will reveal a very special bonus stock I've already purchased. So if you're ready for that, let's get into it. Kicking things off at stock number three on my list is Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT. Spotify is a music streaming service which has the largest market share in the world. According to this report from 2019, Spotify had 35% of the world's market share for music streaming. Second is Apple Music, and then we have Amazon, Tencent, YouTube, and others. Now, Spotify in recent years has faced fierce competition from the likes of Amazon Music and Apple Music. To me, that's the biggest risk with investing into Spotify, as going up against these big tech giants is risky. They have deep pockets and are willing to continually innovate to beat the competition. Also, many of their users are already on their platforms. For example, Apple Music can take advantage of all the new iPhone users and Amazon Music can take advantage of all the Prime users. But what about as a pure music streaming service? Are those platforms better than Spotify? And will people choose to move from Spotify to Amazon Music? Spotify has a free version, which is one of its most unique selling points. You can simply download the app and listen to music for free. Um, and apart from a few ads, if you skip tracks too many times. That's definitely an advantage over Amazon Music, which only offers free trials for its Prime membership. So looking at the feature comparison here, we can see the song catalog size is around 50 million songs for both Amazon Music and Spotify. And you can also purchase high fidelity music via paid upgrade on Amazon Music. The notable features of Amazon Music include X-Ray lyrics and Alexa voice assistance compatibility, whereas Spotify offers best-in-class playlists, car integrations, and podcast support. Spotify recently made headlines for purchasing Joe Rogan's podcast, which is extremely popular and has millions of listeners every single month. Deals such as these offer Spotify a moat against its competitors and gives it a unique advantage. So what about the fundamentals? Well, to find that out, I'm going to deep dive into the numbers on my favorite stock research platform, and that is Stockopedia. Many of you guys always ask me, you comment, Ben, which stock platform do you use? And I tell everyone again and again and again, I use Stockopedia. And I've actually been given an exclusive 25% off discount link exclusive only for you guys, the viewers of Motivation to Invest. So I'll leave that in the link below. And if you fancy trying out the platform and see if it fits your investing style, then go ahead and use the link below. Having said that, let's get into these numbers. So Spotify, we're here on Stockopedia. We can see it's a technology balanced large cap company. Um, and what I love about Stockopedia is every stock is given a stock rank so we can quickly assess whether it's a good buy or a good sell. Stock rank currently of 71, momentum of 87, which is extremely good, quality of 88, which is also extremely good, value of just 15, so the value is not very good for Spotify. So that suggests that the company is overvalued, which is not surprising for a growth stock. Diving into the numbers for Spotify, we can see from its March lows, it's increased by over 93%. But this is the part that really excites me about Spotify, and that is its growth rate. So looking at the compound annual growth rate for the company, generally I consider a company to be a growth stock if it has a growth rate on the revenue of at least 20%. Spotify's is over 44%. 
However, the second risk with Spotify is that the company is still unprofitable as they continuously reinvest that revenue into growing the business. This is a common trait with many growth stocks, especially these days. Now, what I look for when I see an unprofitable growth stock is that it has a clear path to profitability. So to achieve that, what you wanna be looking for is that the margin is actually improving over time. And we can see that with Spotify. So Spotify back in 2014 had an operating margin of minus 17.6%. This has gradually been getting better and is now just minus 1%. So the company is extremely close to becoming profitable. And many analysts predict that it will actually become fully profitable by 2023. So diving into the numbers here, we can see revenue is forecast to increase for 2020 and 2021, as is net income is also forecasted to increase with less losses and earnings per share is also forecasted to improve. Analyst consensus, so we've got people here from Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and many other firms. Four sell, nine hold, 11 buy, four strong buy, and two a strong sell. So there is a couple of sells in there, um, and I suspect that is due to the valuation and the competition. However, there are more buys than sells. Current ratio, 0.82. Now, generally, I do look for a business that has a current ratio of at least 1.5 to 2. To me, that says the business has enough cash on hand to cover its short-term debts. 0.82 is not very good, but it's close to 1. So maybe that can be overlooked. So, so you may be thinking, Ben, you've told us the company is unprofitable. You've told us the competition is high. So why might you invest into this company in October? So I'll tell you why. First, the growth of the company. Secondly, the user base. Third is the podcast purchases, which have built a little bit of a moat around the business. And finally, one of the main reasons I've invested into Spotify is the psychological connection between people. Now this may sound crazy, but let's do a little test right now. I'm gonna say a word and I want you guys to associate a company with it. This is a fun little game and we'll try it out and see how it goes. Television's most exciting hour of fantastic prizes, the fabulous 60 minute price is right. Julie. So if I say to you, video streaming service, what's the best? What do you think? Netflix, correct. Those who said Netflix, one point to you. And if I say taxi service using app on your phone, what would you say? Most people say Uber. I mean, a few people say Lyft as well, but you've got Ubers up there, it's a brand name. If I say searching on the internet, Google, these companies have built that bridge, that psychological bridge between people. And I think those companies have an extremely powerful brand. Peter Lynch, one of the greatest investors who has fund manager for the Magellan Fund, actually beat the market multiple times. So it suggests that this is an extremely important characteristic. The same thing is true for music streaming. If I go on the street and I ask 20 people, music streaming, what's the best? What do you use? Most people, We'll say Spotify. And even those who use Amazon Music now or Apple Music, they most likely still have Spotify downloaded or they've used Spotify in the past. That association is extremely powerful and that is why I find this company fascinating. But I wanna know your thoughts because I personally am a Spotify user. So as the great Peter Lynch says, chances are if you like the product, you may like the stock. So it is a plus for me. But there's also a couple more things I like about Spotify. So first is the algorithm. So once you select which music you like, it will automatically display similar tracks which are very close to what you might like. So it's got a great algorithm which uses artificial intelligence for this. And then there's a the social element in the playlist. If you've spent hours and hours and hours and days and years curating your perfect playlist for every mood and every moment in your life, then would you wanna just switch to Amazon Music and lose all your amazing playlists which you've built up over time. Maybe if you're not really into your music, but those people that are really into their music, 
that'd be a lot of effort having to rebuild that playlist. You may have a jogging playlist, you may have a gym playlist. You may also follow many friends on Spotify. It's quite a social platform. So if you follow many of your friends or even many DJs and people on there who've created great playlists, then you'll lose them if you go to an alternative platform. So to me, these are just some unique elements of Spotify and why I believe it may have a chance to continually grow. However, I'm not saying this is gonna be an easy path for the company. So as Amazon and Apple are major competitors and they can leverage their existing customer bases. But as I have shares in Amazon and Apple, this is just an extra play purely on the music streaming service. Right guys, so on to stock number two on my list, and that is Autodesk. Now this is a market leader in software for architecture, engineering, and many other disciplines. So I actually have some inside info on Autodesk. So many of you guys may know this already, and I may have mentioned it on a previous video, but my former job was being an electrical and electronic engineer. So I actually have a degree in electrical and electronic engineering, first class, and I worked for a company for many years doing design engineering for buildings, from Canary Wharf train station in London to many other projects. So what inside info can I bring from being in that industry? Well, I work for one of the largest and most well-established design consulting firms, and they all use Autodesk, or more specifically, they use a software called Revit, and the electrical engineers use this, the mechanical engineers, the architects, they all use Revit for that. And that is used for that business. And I also know it's used with many of their competitors. So to me, that says that Autodesk has another one of those psychological associations. If you ask anybody, which is the software used for CAD? And they'll say Autodesk. Similar as you might say, what would you use to search on the internet? And you'll say Google. Autodesk has this strong connection and strong relationships with many businesses. Now the stock did have a bit of a hit as the construction industry slowed and many engineering firms decided to not renew their subscriptions. But believe me, once the industry recovers fully, all these businesses will have to use Autodesk. If you guys appreciate info like this, which you don't get anywhere else, then feel free to give this video a big thumbs up. That really helps out the channel in the battle against the YouTube algorithm. So in 2019, Autodesk actually produced stellar returns. And in the first quarter of 2020, it continued that bull run. Revenues increased 20% year over year to $886 million. And its operating profit margin increased 10 percentage points to 28%. Adjusted earnings per share also increased by over 89%. However, due to the economic situation, some of the small businesses, which total between 10 and 15% of the revenue, are facing supply chain disruptions. And many license renewals aren't increasing usage of the software at the moment, as the global pandemic is leading many design firms to tighten their belts. However, with Autodesk being an established leader in design, engineering, and architecture, to me, this is a great stock for the next decade. So let's dive into the numbers for Autodesk. We can see it's technology balance, large cap company, stock rank of 75, momentum of 89, quality of 99, which I do agree with, value of just nine. So it's still not a value stock. There's actually quite a lot of exuberance in it. And I believe that's as it's because it's a software provider. And we all know at the moment, software companies have major valuations. Compounding annual growth rate in the revenue is just 5.44%. This company is more of a slow grower as many companies which use the software are well established. So revenues forecast to increase to $3.7 billion in 2021 and in 2022 increased to $4.4 billion. Net income is forecast to increase to $852 million in 2021. And in 2022, the net income is forecast to increase to over $1.2 billion. Earnings per share is also forecast to increase. Analyst consensus, three hold, nine buy, six a strong buy, two sell and one strong sell. So we've got people here from Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. Interesting to see a couple of sells in there. I believe that may be due to the valuation and the economic conditions. Current ratio 0.84 could be a little bit better. It could be at least over one. Um, but for such as an established company, it's a software business that overheads are not as high as say a brick and mortar retail store. 
P ratio 47.3. So that's Autodesk. And finally, stock number one on my list is one that's working on a vaccine for the global health crisis. And that is Johnson & Johnson, a well-established, diversified dividend player. So diving into the numbers for Johnson & Johnson, we can see that it's a healthcare conservative large cap company, stock rank of 89, momentum of 87, value 43 and quality 92. It's a slow grower with compound annual growth rate and the revenue of around 2%. And its dividend is growing. So at the moment it's got a dividend of around 2.6%, 2.7%. So you get that nice dividend regular every single quarter. Reported revenue is forecast to increase for 2021 to 87.5 billion dollars. Now, the size of these companies are just humongous. Net income is forecast to increase to $21 billion in 2021 and $24 billion in 2022. To put the size of this company in perspective, its market cap is $300 billion. That is a billion dollars more than the GDP of Greece. That's Greece the country. Johnson & Johnson is a billion dollars more in size. Analyst consensus, now this is home run. Five holds, seven buy, six a strong buy. A lot of bullish analysts on the stock, Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, um, Goldman Sachs, all saying this stock is a buy or at least a hold. Current ratio 1.25, so it's also got the best debt to cash ratio of the stocks I mentioned on my list, 1.25. And the PE ratio is not too bad for a healthcare stock, a pharmaceutical stock, PE ratio 16.7, who's also working on a vaccine for the global health crisis. 16.7 PE, come on guys, this is incredible stock. If you wanna find out more about Johnson & Johnson and my top five pharmaceutical stocks which are working on a vaccine for the global health crisis, then be sure to check out my previous video. I'll leave it on the link below. Incredible video, great industry analysis. And now as a treat for you guys, I'm gonna give you guys a very special bonus stock. Now, this is a stock I've mentioned before on this channel and I'm very bullish on it. Um, the stock, we all know it, it's called Alphabet or Google. Now, I won't go into the reasons which I have been buying heavily this stock in September during the correction. Also, I may continue to buy in October as it is facing antitrust litigation and thus the bad press may equal volatility, which also may equal opportunity. If you want more information on this stock, and I strongly suggest you do research the stock fully, Check it out in the link below. I did a full stock analysis on Alphabet, diving into the entire business, its numbers, its fundamentals, its business model, its revenue stream, and everything else. Now you may be asking what's one of the best ways to invest into these stocks. Now of course there are a variety of platforms to use, but I suggest you use one of the free trading platforms. One of my favorites at the moment is eToro, who are also a sponsor for this channel. Now the unique things about eToro, I'll tell you straight off the bat. You can do crypto trading, you can buy and sell stocks for free, you can do copy portfolio, so you can copy successful traders' portfolios, and you can also invest into all the different ETFs, stocks out there. If you guys wish to try out that platform, it's completely free and it will also support the channel. I'll leave a link below, you can use that link, you can sign up to eToro and see if it fits your investing style, but I'd love to know what you guys think. And let me know what you think of the stocks I mentioned in this video. What stock will you be buying in October? Let me know those thoughts in the comments below and we'll get the entire community involved. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, which allows me to create more great content like this for you guys. In addition, if you want more investing tips and exclusive stock market picks, which I personally am investing into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel and turn that notification bell on. With that being said, I wish you guys well, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Invest safe.